Hey guys, Jerome here. Today we're going to be talking about the perfect beginner workout. Now, I don't like clicking on videos and having to wait 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes before somebody actually gets into the topic. So let me give you the too long, didn't read version, and then we'll go into everything detail by detail. So the perfect beginner workout is going to consist of a pushing and pulling movement through every major plane of movement of the body, a horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull, a quad dominant leg movement like a squat, and then a glute hamstring hip dominant leg movement like a deadlift or a hip hinge. And if you do all six of those movements, you are going to be uh, eliciting the compensatory response, which is a size and strength increase in uh, all of the major and most of the minor muscle groups in the body. So those are the exercises. In terms of volume, uh, one set, frequency, as often as your recovery ability will allow, intensity just to the point where it starts getting difficult and finally write everything down. So that's the 60 second perfect workout in a nutshell. That being said, let's uh, break this down. Let's get into a little bit more of the details. Exercises, there's a myriad of exercises that you could do. Uh, free weights, barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, medicine balls, um, TRX, exercise bands, uh, machines, there's tons of different things you could do, but if you're brand new to the gym, like most people that I work with, it's generally just going to be easiest just to work on machines. Um, the advantage of machines is they have a guided range of movement. Your chance of injury is very, very low. The idea of a machine is, uh, while a perfect machine cannot be designed for every human being, it's going to get you used to uh, developing the mind-muscle connection, developing that feel for what every movement should feel like. If you were doing a chest press, you should feel different muscle groups working to varying degrees of intensity and effort depending on where you are in that particular portion of the range of movement. So that when you feel comfortable with these movements and you want to try something else, you might want to try a barbell bench press, a dumbbell bench press, TRX, or some of these other different exercises exercises that you could do for a muscle group, um, you know how that muscle should feel as your arms or as your joints are going through that particular range of movement. Volume. I advocate one set to failure. Now you could, or sorry, not to failure, one total set. You could do more. Um, but the thing is, when you go to the gym, you're imposing a physical stress on the body. And like any other physical stress, the amount that your body can withstand is limited. There's only so much sunlight that you could be exposed no. to before, no. whoop, a little vibrate on the phone. There's only so much sunlight that you could be exposed to before you're gonna get a sunburn. You can only rub your hands together so much before you start eating through that skin and you develop uh, some kind of abrasion wound. Um, your body has a finite ability to withstand any physical stress, exercise included. People have to be very careful with exercise. It's very easy to overtrain with respect to volume and intensity. So you have to start somewhere. So you might as well start in one set. And if you're doing these compound pushing and pulling movements, um, you are going to work the majority of muscles in the body. And because of that, um, they will be very intense. Uh, this will be a very intense workout. Frequency. As often as your recovery ability will allow. Eh, whoop ass. <laughs> as you can recover from. So like I said, uh, exercise is a stress on the body. And because of that, depending on the nature of the stress and how intense the stress is, your body will need a certain amount of time to adapt and to recover. Now, I used to advocate that um, you should exercise with as much intensity as possible and then give yourself as much time as necessary to fully recover from that. Now, the basis of that still largely holds true, but your goal when you go to the gym is not to generate as much intensity as possible. Your goal is to do precisely what is required to get the desired effect of bigger, stronger muscles. So um, one set with a decent degree of intensity, something that's gonna stimulate a size and strength increase, and then get the hell out of the gym, go home, rest, recover, and then hit it the next day. And hopefully you should be a little bit stronger the next day, but we'll address that in a bit. And if you think about, um, if you think about like farmers, or if you think about gymnasts, or if you think about, um, you know, most Olympic athletes, um, think about back in high school. Most people that watch this probably participated in some kind of sport in middle school or high school. You might remember that first day of practice running sprints in basketball or maybe, um, you know, 
doing push-ups and, and all the calisthenics you had to do in football or maybe running cross country, that first day of practice is usually a rude awakening for a lot of people. Um, maybe you had a job on a farm and you think about farmers, if they have to throw bales of hay, they don't try and throw a bale of hay as hard as they physically possibly can. They throw in such a manner that they're moving at a good pace because they have tons of work to do um, and they don't want to wear themselves out. And uh, similarly in sports, you know, you're generally not pushing as hard as you possibly can in a given moment because it's extremely taxing systemically on the body. Instead, you're moving with maybe 70, 80 percent of uh, the maximum effort that you can generate at that point in time. So you might remember um, some middle school, high school sport where you go through that first day of practice and you think like, oh my God, I can never do that again. Or maybe you uh, worked on a farm for a day and you were just taxed and or maybe you had a really physical job. You worked construction. I had a job uh, when I was uh, 16, um, riding along with truck drivers, unloading groceries for different restaurants. Um, very physically taxing job. And I, I thought after some of these jobs, like no way I can go back and do that again. It was so tough. But you go back and you're a little bit stronger. Um, muscles get stronger actually fairly quickly. A lot of the science has been done on what's called muscle protein synthesis, which is um, essentially the net positive or negative amount that your body builds muscle, is after you elicit some kind of response that triggers a size and strength increase in the muscle, your muscle protein synthesis goes up. It generally peaks about 24 hours after the event and then tapers back down to baseline at about the 48 hour mark. So ideally, if you could exercise um, seven days a week or every other day, you could maximize your muscle protein synthesis, assuming you can do it in such a way that you don't tax your joints or your systemic body's ability to fully recover from that workout. And that is done by uh, limiting intensity. But essentially, uh, because at least for now we're speaking with respect to frequency, you want to train as often as you can recover from. If you wake up one morning and you're just feeling totally wiped out, uh, don't do this full body workout that day. Uh, with respect to intensity, like I said, I used to preach uh, making every single set as intense as possible. And Arthur Jones was quoted as saying something along the lines of, um, if a set of bicep curls doesn't make you feel like you want to throw up, you're not working out with enough intensity. And uh, Boyer Co., bodybuilder from the 70s and 80s, um, certainly been on record, certainly been on video talking about how hard Arthur Jones used to push people during these workouts. Um, I used to preach that idea for a long time, and I no longer advocate that approach because too much intensity, again, is imposing too large of a physical stress on the body. Past a certain point, giving your body uh, a large amount of stress will be more than it can recover from within a certain time frame. Think about... Um, Breaking a bone, for example, our bones are really durable. Our bones are really dense. They're really strong. They're capable of withstanding a large amount of force. But if you give that bone too much force, it will break. If that bone breaks, it has to be set and then it needs a large amount of time to recover from. Instead, there's something in uh, human anatomy and physiology called Wolf's Law of Resistance. It's Wolf with, uh, I think, two Fs or one F and an E. Um, it basically says uh, imposing some degree of physical force on the body, actually the body overcompensates with bigger, stronger um, bones, joints, and tendons. So um, you want enough intensity to stimulate a size and strength increase, but you don't want to work out so intense that you inhibit your body's ability to recover from it. Getting back to farmers, you're moving at a decent degree of intensity and you would throw bales of hay until either the job is done within a respectable time frame, or until you start to feel too tired from it and then you go to something else, some other piece of work that you have and you can get back to that particular workout later. So when it comes to uh, resistance training, because exercising with weights is very specific, um, to certain movements of the body, it is very, very easy to overtrain. So with respect to intensity, I only advocate training um, until the movement becomes slower or um, dangerous. And what I mean with dangerous is if I, and I know I advocated uh, machines, but if you're doing like a dumbbell or a barbell shoulder press, if it starts getting hard and that shoulder starts rotating too much externally, you're putting your body in a position where you could very easily get injured. Anybody that's ever done uh, judo, mixed martial arts, knows that like wrist locks, thumb locks, ankle locks, any kind of joint lock, you don't need to impose a lot of physical stress on the body to cause um, a lot of harm. You just have to move the body in a way 
that um, it's essentially not designed to move. Our elbows, for example, or hinges, they basically move in one direction. And if you impose a large amount of force in the opposite direction than this joint is supposed to move in, um, you could very easily break that joint without a large amount of force. So if you're performing an exercise, whether it's a machine or a free weight, once it starts getting difficult, if you're essentially lifting like two seconds up, two seconds down, once you're pushing hard and that movement starts slowing down, safely return the weight to a starting position and that's it. That is as much intensity as I would want someone to generate in a particular exercise. Um, first of all, anyone who's advocating any kind of strength training routine, uh, safety should be their primary goal and results should be second. It doesn't do you guys any good to train with um, large amounts of intensity if it gets you injured or if one workout that you do kind of puts you on your ass for three or four days before you feel kind of like your energy and your central nervous system has recovered it doesn't do you guys a lot of good um, my job first and foremost is to make sure you guys are exercising safely and correctly so with respect to intensity um, for beginners i generally advocate now um moving in such a manner that it's a controlled movement in every single exercise let's just take a bench press for example it's a controlled push you know maybe one to two seconds up you're not lifting as fast as you can and you control the weight on the way down and you keep going until that movement becomes until it starts slowing down um, until you are no longer able to maintain that tempo while lifting the weight once you hit that point and your muscles start getting taxed slowly terminate the set, return the weight to the starting position, and write it down. Uh, writing down is one of the best things that you can do. Um, now, how many reps? I'll kind of put that under volume. Um, with repetitions, there's a lot of misinformation. A lot of people say, you know, one to five reps is for strength, uh, five to eight is more strength and some hypertrophy or growth, eight to 12 reps is kind of a good mix of like strength and size and then you know 12 to 15 or 15 plus repetitions is for endurance um i believe it was brad shanefield recently did a study that showed as long as you train near that point of momentary muscular failure to the point when your muscles start fatiguing uh you will have essentially the same um size increase you get a little little bit more strength if you use heavier weights but uh shanefield's study used 30 percent through 80 percent of your one repetition max now what that means is if you could lift a weight let's just say 100 pounds one time for a certain exercise 30 percent of that would be using 30 pounds until the point where uh started getting really difficult and 80 percent would be doing the same exercise with 80 pounds until the point where it started to become really really difficult and again, uh, Shanefield's study basically showed that as long as you train near or to that point of momentary muscular failure where that exercise starts becoming really difficult, it doesn't matter if you use lighter weights or heavier weights. Now, if uh, you could use lighter weights or heavier weights, it generally makes sense to err on the side of using lighter weights because it'll be easier to control the weight. And the more you can control the weight, the less likely you are to get injured. Again, safety is our top priority. But as a general guideline, um, 10 repetitions is what I advocate. Uh, let's just say six to 10. Everybody has to get started in the gym and generally you don't always know where to set the machines or what dumbbells to pick or what weights to pick. So pick something you think you can handle. And again, perform it to the point using perfect form or if you're on a machine, just until the point that um, that movement starts slowing down while you're lifting the weight. And then record how many repetitions that is. So let's just say that you're doing a chest press machine. Um, you hit eight reps good and that ninth rep, you're trying to push and it's getting a little bit harder to lift. You can't quite lift as fast. You set it down and then you record eight repetitions at whatever the weight was. And then the next day when you go back or two days later or whenever fits in your schedule and you do that same exercise again, um, you have that goal in the back of your mind. Now your goal is not to uh, try and improve on your numbers every single workout. That encourages the wrong mindset because if you're always trying to improve upon your previous numbers, you're gonna start wiggling around, you're gonna start lifting the weights faster than you should, you're gonna start doing things that you necessarily shouldn't do to try and beat a number. Um, the numbers that you get when you write everything down are the measure of progress, not the goal. Your goal is to go into the gym and pre precisely perform exactly what you need to do for a size and strength increase. Don't focus on the weights. Focus on the muscles contracting against the resistance through a safe 
plane of movement uh, to the point where it starts to become quite difficult. Once you can get more than 10 repetitions on your own, increase the weight by the smallest amount possible on your next workout. And again, write everything down. So let's just do a sample workout. Let's say, um, let's do chest press machine, let's say 200 pounds, and this is how I write it, uh, eight reps. Next exercise, um, if you just did a pushing movement, I generally don't advocate going right into the other pushing movement because similar muscle groups that are involved are going to be fatigued. So the order that I like to go is a push movement, a pull movement, a leg movement, then go back to the other push movement, the other pull movement, then a leg movement. So if I do a horizontal push, um, the next thing I like to do generally is a seated row. 200 pounds times seven reps. Wait a couple minutes, wait as long as you need to until you feel like you're fully recovered, and then you do a leg movement. 400 pounds times 10. Again, uh, once that's set on the leg press is done, rest as long as you have to. And since you started with a push movement, now that we did a push pull and a leg movement, we're going back to a vertical push movement. So um, let's just say Nautilus, shoulder press, 110 times, let's just say you tried four. You know, maybe it's a little too heavy. You rest until necessary. And now we're going to do a vertical pulling movement. You could do an overhand like pull down. You could do uh, a chin up. You can do an underhand pull down. If you really like how it feels, you can do a wider pull down, even though I don't advocate that particular movement. Pick exercises that you feel comfortable with, that you feel that you're going to be able to generate a good degree of focus, concentration, and intensity. So let's just say um, underhand pull down, uh, 150 times you know 12 and then uh, X bar deadlift. Uh, now some of these exercises, if you need to have somebody um, show you the movements, by all means, you know, book a, a session with a personal trainer, watch a lot of videos and start light, start as light as you have to. Let's just, so let's just say you use just the bar and did uh, you know, 20 repetitions. So let's say that this is your workout. That's what you did, those six basic compound pushing and pulling movements. You did a horizontal push, horizontal pull, leg movement, a vertical push, a vertical pull, and then a glute hip hamstring movement. You've essentially worked the majority of the major and minor muscle groups in the body. Now, there are a few things that arguably could use some work. Traps, calves, maybe forearms, maybe neck movements. If there's anything extra that you wanna work, get these six pushing and pulling movements done first, and then if you wanna do a barbell curl, if you wanna bring up you know, your biceps a little bit, um, do that barbell curl. If you wanna hit triceps, if you wanna hit your deltoids a little bit, um, as you get leaner, you'll kind of see what those weak points are, but um, those aren't necessarily as important. You can get away with just these six movements. So let's go back and exercise by exercise. So chest press, we did eight repetitions. So we know that next time we uh, get foot in the, or next time we set foot in the gym, um, we will probably get nine repetitions. Same with the seated row, the leg press. Uh, leg press, we did 400 pounds, seven times, um, or sorry, 10 times. So now we know that the leg press, next time we do it, we're going to increase that weight by the smallest amount possible on the machine. It might be 410, might be 420, depends on the equipment that you have. Uh, shoulder press, I said 110 repetitions times four for a sample workout. Now, if that weight is too heavy and you can't get six to 10 repetitions, drop that weight down a little bit the next time that you work out. Or maybe if you got five or even six and you really wanna work that six to 10 repetition range, you can leave the weight where it is. Um, but the idea is generally just to find a range that's going to work well for you and that you feel fairly comfortable with. Some people might be a little bit more comfortable with lower repetition ranges. Some people might prefer for, you know something like 12 to 15 or 15 to 20 and that's fine the idea is you just pick a range that you feel comfortable with so that you can have some objectivity when you go back and do that next workout um, people get way 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 too hung up on the details and I understand from a marketing standpoint that everybody is trying to say well you know this is what you've tried that hasn't worked and do this instead this is why it hasn't worked uh, truth be told, it's it's more about consistency. It's just about applying the basic fundamentals on a consistent basis that over time will produce results. Um, the thing about reality is reality is objective. And if you were uh, 
consistently adhering to the fundamental rules and laws of nature, of anatomy, of physiology, of mechanics, if you're adhering to those, your results will be uninterrupted until you reach that natural conclusion. And think about it. Think about like a science lab that kids have in middle school and high school. They're all doing the same experiments and they should all get the same results provided they do the same thing exactly. And they all will get the same results provided they're titrating solutions in the exact manner and they're following the steps the way that they're prescribed. And the reason for that is reality is objective. Now, every person is slightly different physiologically. Every single genetic trait that constitutes a human being exists along a broad spectrum that has a wide variety of genetic expression. Uh, think about height. You have some people on one end are very, very short. You have little people. Most people under the meaty part of that bell curve are average height. And then you have outliers on the other end that are very, very tall individuals. But the same principles of anatomy and physiology and biology and of nature are immutable and apply equally to everybody, but there is some slight difference in genetic expression. So the same fundamental principles that allow a man to get on a rocket and fly to the moon and plant a flag and drive a car and then safely return to Earth, um, if we can do that, the whole purpose, the whole idea of going to the gym and just building some muscle and losing some fat is uh, almost infinitely more simple. It's just about doing exactly what nature requires and consistently adhering to the fundamentals. So your sample workout, uh, six basic movements, horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull, quad dominant leg movement, and then hip glute hamstring dominant leg movement. One set of each exercise, six to 10 repetitions, Perform every exercise until it becomes a little bit slower or if you feel that your form is starting to become compromised. Perform that exercise as frequently as your recovery will allow. And that's one thing I should touch on a little bit further. If you do this workout seven days a week and you see that um, you're getting weaker every single day that you're training. Uh, let's say you do seven reps, you work out tomorrow, you do six reps, you work out the next day, you get six, you work out the day after that, you get five. If you're not getting stronger, every single workout and you should you're either working out with too much intensity and you're not giving your body enough time to recover or depending on rest depending on diet or depending on your genetics like your central nervous system you just might not be giving your body enough time to fully recover at which point you might want to consider moving it to every other day so uh, let's see um, that covers intensity and again write everything down your progress chart what you do in the gym will be the best arbiter of uh, your size and strength gains and if you are doing this if you're working out consistently if you're moving if you are gradually getting stronger over time you're building some degree of muscle over time and the thing is we all have a genetic potential with how big we can get and as long as you're getting closer so let's just say here's you starting and here's your ultimate genetic potential it doesn't matter over a long enough period of time if you knock out this first three quarters of the way in six months or whether you do it in you know two years. Every single workout that you get a little bit stronger, you're getting a little bit closer to that genetic potential. So as long as you're making progress, don't worry about it. Stop stressing so much. Um, progress is good by any measure. And you can always sort out the finite, the, the minutia, the minuscule details you can make those adjustments as you go, but most people I deal with just need help getting started. They don't you know, know which exercises to do, how frequently to go, whether they should do this, whether they should do that. And truth be told, most of them just need to get started. They just need to get that skin in the game and they can figure things out along the way. But this is a basic workout that anybody could use to uh, very quickly get closer to their genetic potential. But the biggest step is you just have to get started. So six basic movements. One set of each movement, six to 10 repetitions. Work out as frequently as you can recover from. Uh, use a level of intensity that you only work until it starts getting hard to push that weight or your form starts to be compromised and the movement starts to become dangerous. Write everything down. And if you're doing that, guys, you're gonna have better results in the gym than um, if you can follow that. Uh, a lot of the details that we get caught up in just don't matter that much. Um, you know, the the infinite number of sets and rep schemes, the do I have to do this, do I have to do that, just doesn't matter. Just get into the gym, start moving some weights, um, start eating cleaner, stand when, <laughs> when you should be sitting, just move, be active, 
and uh, stop overcomplicating things. We've got a long time to do this, and you will have results very quickly if you're consistently adhering to these fundamentals. And the metaphor that I always use to wrap that up is the consistent adherence of a plan that's a six out of 10. If 10 is the perfect plan and zero is a crap plan that won't work at all, if you're doing things right on a six to 10 level, um, but you're consistently doing them day in and day out, that'll get you so much better results than somebody who's following a 10 out of 10 plan, maybe once a week or twice a week, or maybe they follow it for a week and then they fall off for a week or two. Consistency is key and consistency is king. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will check in with all of you tomorrow.